10th regular city council meeting of Cross Lake. Let's stand for the pledge. I do. Okay, unfortunately, I have to use glasses, and I cannot, if I have this all the way over my nose, I can't see out of it, so you're going to have to bear with me. First uh, matter that we're going to do is we're going to make a recommendation for appointment to Phil Gary Hecox's position. And I want to make a recommendation to appoint Marsha Bowles to Phil Mr. Gary's position. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Sure. Did we do any interviewing? Not in person, no. The motion that we made said we advertise and we interview. It's not required to do The interview. paper said we advertise and we interview. That was the motion made Mr. by person, all the council members here. To do interviews? I think it's really up to the council what process you follow. We all agreed to that. And I, I've, I've heard that there's been applicants that are upset that they never got a day to be interviewed. Oh, well, I didn't. I thought I was an elected for us to do that. So we I would suggest we table this and then come back and do the interviews like we agreed and published and then we make a decision. Now the interviews are council then I'm assuming was making No, that's, that was the committee was supposed to do the interviewing. Personnel committee. It's actually item 6. It was in the notes on, the on July 20th. From July 20th. Motion made by Aaron. I second it. Uh, well, I don't know. What do we do about that? So I think I think we have to just table it and you guys do the interviewing, and then come back to the next meeting, whatever that meeting is. Another delay in the process, but I guess you well, the, we had rules. We had a motion. You know, that's what we all agreed to. All I'm trying to do is follow the rules, and if we have to start watching every motion, and if we're doing it, so be it. But that's the rules. I would figure we would follow follow guidelines. But Brad, is that what you'd recommend we have to do? Well, you need three votes to appoint somebody. So I'm hearing maybe two already that are saying that should it be interviews. So. Back to it's up well, to the council. Let's cover that because in the personnel committee we had two votes to one, and Char and the administrator said that it, it passed because there were two. Well, fine, and that gets it to this level, but the council is the ultimate decision maker. And if a majority, I'm not sure if that's true, I have, I've heard some a little comments and I've heard some not enough heads, but you need three votes to pass something. If to get to a majority you need interviews, then that's the answer. If three of you don't need interviews, then that's the answer as well, even if there was a prior motion. You can overrule that now as long as you have three votes. But it, you need three votes to do anything affirmatively. All right, well, we're going to have to look into that, but I guess we'll have to let that lie. Let that lie for another day. Okay, then we uh, have to make a motion for approval to the additions to the agenda. I so move. Second. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any conversation? Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Public forum. No action will be taken on any of the issues raised. If appropriate, the issue would be placed on the agenda for a future council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Each speaker is given a three minute time limit. Anybody have anything? Come on up. Who are you and where do you live? Jerry Norgard and 37104 Bunkhouse Road. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> 72 years ago, my father died. He was only 45 years of age, but had been in a, uh, ill for some time. If you're wondering why this is pertinent or has anything to do with anything that we're doing here, it is this. My dad's illness was job related. He was a fireman 
at the municipal power plant in my hometown in North Dakota. But while his job description said fireman, he wasn't a fireman in the classic sense. He didn't drive fire trucks or put out fires. Instead, Jerry, he was, you've got a three minute limit. I just want to. Yeah, well, I hope I've got it timed out if we okay. don't. Good, okay. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, anyway, he was part of a workforce that kept the city's electric plant running. They ran 24 7, 365 days a year. Unfortunately, the environment in which they worked had a lot of asbestos in it. And back in the 1920s when the plant was built, in the 1930s and the 1940s, not a lot was known about that. Well, he left behind my mom, a 15-year-old daughter, and me. And I was just five years old at the time, and it took me several years to comprehend the fact that my dad wouldn't be coming back. The war had been going on for years by that time, and uh, a lot of the other kids' dads came back from the service, and I thought, well, my dad would be coming back too. So, even though his job kept him, because he was considered an essential uh, in person, uh, <clears throat> even though his job kept him out of the war, it still killed him. So my concern today is regarding the health and safety of the men and women who serve the Cross Lake Fire Department. They have families, and they, I am sure, want to be able to return to their kids safely. And they should not be expected to risk their lives after returning from a fire call or any other emergency, and after to decontaminate or clean up in what amounts to a hazardous environment. For that matter, they don't need to be training or working on their equipment under such conditions. While it may be true that such things were not well understood back in the 20s and 30s and 40s, no such excuse exists today. And the city has a moral obligation to strive to keep its people safe whether they are full-time, part-time, or volunteer, and provide safe and adequate facilities is a very, very significant part of that obligation. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody else got something for public forum? No? Okay, we're gonna move along to the consent calendar. You guys all had a chance to review? Yes. Do we have a motion? So moved. I'll second it. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Critical issues. Is Mr. Redkey here? Yes. He is? Okay. Two years ago, we first started talking about the city admin remodel and there was a lot of talk about mold in the city building. And so I took it upon myself to call up Service Master and have a test done. It was not very well received at the city hall when I walked in whatever morning it was and said we're gonna do a mold test, but we went ahead and did it, huh Kim? Yep. So what I, I have asked you to come in here today to explain the results of the mold test you did. And everybody's got a copy of it or? Yep, okay. we do actually. So if you look at the second page, page two. So basically what Instascope is, is basically it's taking a, um, a real-time analysis of the biological activity in the air of the rooms that we're doing the sampling of. Okay, can everybody understand him? Yeah. Could we, could Take you, could you drop your mask so you, we can hear you? So basically what Instascope, Instascope is, it's a real-time analysis of the biological activity that's in the air at the time of, of the test being done, of the rooms that we did. So what that means is I use a machine that has uh, UV lights and particle counter. 
uh, that's, uh, as we draw air into it, it's um, looking at the, the type of particles that are being drawn into it, and it's determining whether it's a PM 2.5 or a PM 10, which is the size of particle that's regulated. And it's also looking at the biological activity, whether it's a mold or not mold. And so um, as we do a room, I'm taking a look at the room, number one, for physical signs of mold. Number two, I'm looking at, I'm taking the cubic footage uh, measurement of the room because basically the cubic footage of the room determines on how long I take the test. And then I take the machine and pl plug that information in, and then I go around the whole complete room from wall to wall, and what that does is it draws in, in the air, it determines whether it's a biological, um, if, whether it's regular dust particle or it's mold. And it has a time frame that I have to go around that room and during that time frame, it collects that, and then it, it puts a, um, a mold spore count down on paper, you know, on the, on the results itself. So I do every room, because if you're gonna do, a, a, like the building, we went around, we did all the office areas, um, and what it does is, as we do that test, every room is being compared to each one of the rooms. I also did a baseline sample outside, because part of the test is you're looking at you're comparing the indoor air quality to the outdoor air quality. It's looking at what type of year it is, what type of mold spores are available or are outside, and it's looking at the same thing as what's inside, because outside air can also determine the mold spore count inside. So if you've got, let's say we're in the fall of the year, you've got a lot of trees, the leaves are falling down, and, and you know, a lot of dead grass and all that stuff, your mold spore counts are gonna be a lot higher. And so that's taken in consideration for your indoor air quality because if, as the air blows on the outside, it's gonna raise the amount of mold spores that are inside in, uh, the room. So as we went around and we did all the rooms, um, it came back as, there's three, three yeah, different- Can I interrupt uh, you for one second, please? Yep. At the time that you took the test, what level of, was it the equipment you were using, was that good equipment at the time you took the test? That is best that's out there for instant mold analysis. So I'm sorry, it's the it's the, It was the best that's out there for instant so mold analysis. At the time of the test, it was the best equipment Correct. you could have had. Correct. Okay, and during the test, who was present for the test? Uh, myself and you, and plus other members of uh, administration, I think, were at their desks and stuff. So I think the police chief... But I don't chief, think you and I walked around the building unescorted, did we? I think the police chief was there, wasn't he? Well, I think it was actually the sergeant. I don't think the okay. police chief was there. Okay, I guess I... And would. I believe Mr. Strand was, was there. I had keys, so. Yeah. 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 And so. then the other department heads, whoever, were wandering around. How well received were you? Do you recall that? Um, as I remember, it wasn't great. I mean, it was like, why, why was I there? But that's... Besides the point, I was there because you would request me to be yeah. there, and so that's. But I mean, as I remember, the reception was not eager and welcoming. <laughs> yeah. But okay, go ahead. Go ahead with your report. So if you're looking on page two, so basically there's three three categories that we're going to look at. A number one is green. If if a room is in the green category, it's basically, as it says here, these rooms are um, airborne mold concentrations that would be expected in a normal building. So all the rooms that we have listed in here are at normal levels uh, in these, uh, you know, in the tests that we did. So when you look at, we Wait, also have- All the rooms in the building? All the rooms, yeah, we did all the rooms except, you know, we didn't do the fire hall itself, or the, the, where the trucks are stored, but I think we did everything else. Okay, but so this is all the rooms? The all the rooms, yep. Okay. And so then the next category would be yellow. And basically, if a room comes back as yellow, that means it's got uh, higher concentrations of, of biologic activity than would be considered normal. So as you can see, the water tank area came back as a yellow, uh, the file room came back as yellow, and the women's bathroom came back as a yellow. And did, Some, you, did you give an explanation of why that may have been? And, and like I said, when I kind of explain these things, sometimes when a room comes back in a, at yellow, there could be many variations. There could be some hidden mold, but there could be things like over dusty, needs a good cleaning, sometimes just doing that 
will improve the conditions, but it, but it also means that there could be other things going on there. And I know there was mention of the file room having a water damage uh, prior to that. Um, I think that was one of the things that I, that I earmarked that, uh, that I remember hearing. Um, the water tank area, there was physical mold growing. Um, so we knew that. The women's bathroom wasn't sure. There wasn't any physical, um, visible mold that we've seen. But the, Could a dry floor drain create that? Uh, and if you let a dr floor drain go dry, meaning that there's no water in the, in the pea trap, then that also can give off uh, bacteria from uh, the floor drain. We didn't there. check that at the time. We did not. No, it was meant, I mean, yeah. There's, there's reasons why it could be. Yep. Okay. And then the other thing was, uh, so if something comes back in as a red, that that means it has um, considerably higher uh, amounts of biological activity, mold spores, and it needs to be looked at as far as in depth uh, to look and see where the mold is because at that point in time I don't believe we've seen physical mold uh, growing there but but it did have a, the highest reading of all the rooms and that is in close proximity to other things that are going on which is you know whatever's going on in the um, uh, the fire truck area the water treatment or the water tank area all that kind of stuff is kind of right in that same area and I don't know where where the um, furnace system and stuff is drawing from or anything like that so so as we go through each of these rooms did we discuss what the levels were at the time of the test we went through this um, when I was done because like I said until the last test is done a, a test can move because everything's based on it looks at all the rooms and it's comparing all the rooms and then at the last test is when it does its final calculations and gives the results. And we did go through the test results at that point in time, um, just as we are right now. And who was present for that as we went through it? Um, I believe you well, and I. That was two years ago. I yeah, guess. and, I, I, and I, I think the same three people, if I remember right, I, 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 I see so many either. people. I'm just asking. I think it was the same three yeah. people, so. Okay. And were there comments made? I mean, the red, the red room was the fire department office room. That was the highest room. Correct. And I believe at the time you made a comment about the fumes in the garage, or mm -hmm. there could be multiple reasons why that room is testing high. Correct. Yep. Okay. So yeah, I mean, other than that, that's the that's everything that I remember when we went through that. Like I say, it was two years ago, and, and I've done a lot of. So would you say that the volumes that are listed in the fire department office room and it's 1999 FT3, whatever that means, is that a dangerous level or what level is that at? Well, the problem is when we try to determine what's a dangerous level is that, you know, the reason why there's no set governmental guidelines as far as what's safe for, for me or you is because one person can't walk into a room that has mold in it without swelling up and, and the next person could be in there for a long period of time. So um, the thing is, is you know, it, this test here is trying to determine, uh, to make a determine of, you know, what levels can be considered acceptable for, you know, if you want to call normal occupancy. So is this an acceptable level no. on the high end or not? It's, this is the high end. The Both high anything end. in the yellow and anything in the red is concerned. Okay. Okay, what else do you have? Anything? That's it. Okay, I'm going to open it up to questions from whoever, if anybody's got any. We got them here now, so. Eric. So the technology changed all the last few years? You can't talk from that. You can One at a time. This why the technology has changed all. You have to go to the mic. Just give your name and address. Thank you. David Anderson, 36077 Bonnie Lake Road. Uh, just wondering as far as technology, if it's changed much in the last couple of years. This is still the state-of-the-art technology. Okay. All right. There isn't much that I know of that we can go out and do instant uh, analysis of biological activity. Okay. Right. Yep, come on, Eric. I've heard a little rumor today that you want to stick my head on a platter, so let's, let's have it. I'm not going to stick your head on any platter. I'm going to clarify, uh, make a statement. When you did this, you circumvented the process. 
And that's what got Mike and myself upset with you. We never said the process should not be completed, did we? You showed no interest in the process. Matter because the process your finger in my chest and told me because you, you never circumvented me, again Mayor, without me being there. That's exactly that's right. exactly right. Yeah. You do not circumvent me and go into my office without okay, but that's acting what as a council member with council approval. That okay. doesn't happen. You can't act on your own. I have been reprimanded for that, but do it okay, again. Okay, but go you ahead. didn't. You didn't let it be known as that when you were going through your questioning. Correct? You said to, we were upset about it. To I didn't know about it until after you were done and my sergeant told me yeah. that you were in the office. Yeah. And you weren't acting as a council member, you were acting as Dave Nevin, oh, private yeah. citizen. A concerned citizen about the mold in the building. That's right, exactly right. Exactly. Okay. My point. Okay. Secondly, knowing this information and hearing that it was dangerous levels it sounds like more information should have been forthcoming to the city employees and the city council and the citizens of the cross lake who are in and out of the city building that we should have done more studies i'll let mike uh continue with that line of uh, thought if he wants to but you were given an opportunity to bring that to the council and you refused. And I did not extend this document as an opportunity for you to take it. The point is there was information no, that you had is, is that, that you didn't I share. I did do it and you did not receive it. That is the point. So come on, Mike. Come on up and you get after me. All right, Chip. Ken, I got a couple questions. If this was your building, at Service Master, and you had this red, what would you do? Well, as I instruct everybody, anything in the yellow and anything in the red needs further review. It should be something looked at, done, anything like that. So you would further investigate the, the situation? Correct. That's, okay. that's what I would say at all. Okay. So, Mr. Mayor, I'm just wondering, you had this information. I know you didn't go through the right avenues with council approval. Why didn't you bring it to our attention as an elected official that we have an issue in the fire department? Well, I certainly tried to, Chip. I tried to multiple times. And part of that was asking to get reimbursed for the document. So you could have brought and it to council and said, I'm swallowing my pride. I did something wrong. I bring it to council. I'd like to get this reimbursed and then I can at let the everybody time, have it. You guys had no interest in looking we at We had this interest. Document. I spent two years on this building committee, and we mentioned there was mold. Did you ever ask me to look at yeah. this document, and I didn't Yes, I have, you? many times. Is that the last time, two weeks ago, when you ran out on a run, when I was going to get out and show it to you? You were going to show it to me then, after I asked you again. We At talked about, Mr. Mayor, we talked about mold. Why would I, why would I Mr. not Mr. Mayor, we talked document. about mold in the, in the building committees many, many times. Why didn't you bring it up? First of all, I'm not a mold person. After, well, after this, the other thing is, we wouldn't be where we are wait today. A Hold it. Don't ask me a Mayor. question and then interrupt me. I'm asking Let me answer that question. Mayor, calm down. You asked me why I didn't bring it up. Yep. I don't know how to interpret this. That's why I asked Ken to come and interpret this. Two question, years later? I don't know how to do it. Two years later. Two, well, what it was requested, because this has been dead for two years. No, no one has hasn't. asked about it. No. I don't agree. After that meeting, and after there was no interest from anybody to look at this document, I went home and I shoved it in the city of Cross Lake folder cabinet. Never thought about it again. Did you until this came up? Did you read the report? Currently or at the time? Did you read the report at the time? You know, <clears throat> I can't honestly answer that. I can't okay. recall. So you didn't see the where it says red and says it needs to be looked at immediately? I really I don't I don't really think I did, Chip, but okay. I know that could be a compliment. Can I finish what I was gonna say then? Pardon me? Can I finish? Sure. So if we knew about this, it may be able to change the building construction committee. We wouldn't have stopped construction now because now high tech didn't know anything about it. The information that you had access to would have been valuable information for us in the building committee and where we're sitting right now. Well, and the fact is the, <clears throat> the health and wellness of my firefighters is my number one priority. And for us to be sitting in there the last two years, or wh who knows how long we've had that mold, 
and we didn't have a call that day so there was no exhaust is a major problem to me because who knows what the health risks are what we've been exposed to that should be this council's number one priority just like the gentleman said family we, we go out on a run 24 hours a day 365 days we don't have holidays we go every time come back we don't want to come back to a hall okay, get that's it. infected you get it Chip, this report came back your room was red I'm, Correct. I'm, I'm not going to say that you were but I kind of believe you were in the office when we took that report but I was not there I certainly was not I was not there with Ken we were I was not company. there okay so there's that there's the women bathroom that had it the mm -hmm. file closet that mm -hmm. had it and what was the other area the water the pump room and everybody knew that was an issue for sure so it but wasn't an overwhelming thing most of the areas were clear in the green it it was an alarming thing but at the this time, is an alarming that is okay that's one area but at the time it was offered and nobody wanted it so I, I threw it away I and I paid with the that. bill I disagree I with you we had every clear. opportunity to bring it to council to say your due diligence of saying, hey, I, miss, I made a mistake, here's the results, we need to look into this a little bit further, we wouldn't have right, stopped, well, the, we would have known that there was mold in all the walls. We would have done more investigation into the walls throughout the building. Okay, well, I don't That's know how my, we're going to resolve thoughts. that, but... Mike, you want to get up? Well, I'm just repeating old history here, Mr. Mayor, because on the 15th of October, when I found out you were going to do this, I asked you to stop. Mm -hmm. by phone and you hung up on me. So I wrote to you a memo which I copied to the clerk that said you have an opportunity to bring this up and do a proper study. I would encourage you to continue to ask questions and bring this up so we can figure out what we're dealing with and you did not respond to it. Um, the issue I have with the whole thing where I got upset with you was that there's a process that you need to follow and you went around it and I felt as then as I do today that if you had information and you didn't share it the fact that you went out on your own and did it and paid for it yourself is no longer relevant the fact that you didn't share it with people is because I'm not a, I'm not done sir okay. I'm not a mold expert like you either but I'm smart enough to pick up a report where it says red to look at it and say, I should probably do some more investigation. And you assured all of us there was no problem. So I don't buy your excuse for one minute that you didn't understand it. And I'm done. Done? Did I ever offer this study to anybody in the city? Did I ever offer it up? You offered it to us on the 22nd of, of July of this year. Oh, okay, so at the time you're saying I never know. July 22nd of 2020, not October of 2018. Okay, well, Quite I a highly difference. disagree with you, but if that's what you're going to say, that's it. Anybody else want to say anything about this? Okay, come on, Kevin. Captain Saturday, 15096 Wolf Trail. Um, I was the one that headed the uh, committee that uh, put together that built this beautiful building. And um, I think back at the time, Mayor, um, it, it's really disheartening to me that this wasn't shared with the building committee, at, at least some of us, Mayor, so we could have made, we made some better decisions. But you know what, guys? Other than you folks sitting in that building for the last two years, it's water over the dam. I sat down with you, Mayor, Mike, fire chief and the police chief one Friday morning at City Hall and said if you guys don't put your differences aside and work together we're never going to end up with a building right yeah I believe my so. exact comments I think so it's water over the dam right now it's time for this stuff to stop and it's time for you guys to start working together again to make a good decision whether it costs us an extra million and a half or two million or not as a taxpayer we need a building built that these guys can come back to safely every day and that can withstand a storm like we had a few years ago that went through here so these guys can come out and respond. And I think at this point maybe that committee needs to come back together and try to 
pulls him in some good information from high tech and uh, and from other people that are that are uh, experts in this and make a good decision on where we're going to move forward with this building. I tried to pull the committee back together a couple of weeks ago and it was rejected. So maybe it would go now. I don't. But at the time, I agree with you. I think the committee. Because we want to do, I want to do what the people in town want us to do. That's what I want to do. That's who I'm representing. So. Are you referring to when you asked me about the committee? Possibly. Okay. Was it I don't you? want the full committee. If I talked to Dan Hagerson today, if you want to bring a group of five on a committee, that'd be great, but not 18 people. And that'd you want to select the five probably. No, you can do whatever you want, but I'm just saying 18 people is not a committee. It sure worked pretty well to put this together, I think. Okay. Mayor? Yep. I do have a question, of if you could come back up. Okay. I think you got the gist of what's going on, right? Yep. Okay, the, especially the red. Now, Chief, was that, it was your old office, correct? In the, it's the radio. Next, okay, has that been ripped out yet or not? No. Okay. But the rest of it all has? Well, just the, the, the yellow area. areas. No, just the administrative area. Just the administrative, so the bathrooms and that stuff will still sit in there. Yeah, yeah I think so. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, half of this stuff has already been torn out and is set to be set to be mitigated. Where does that? How does this report now affect us? That's what I would like to know. Right now, the poor, this report really is inaccurate. To what's going on there? I mean, you've got things taken apart now, and and things of things that could have changed in two years' time. So I don't know. It could be worse. It could be better. Right. You know, based on what's going on, you know, I'm not opposed to is if something's opening up, or you want, you know, you want an opinion on something, going there and taking a look at it. You know, to give you an opinion of what I think could be done. If there's something that could be remediated or, or something like that, I'm not, you know, I'm not opposed to that because, I mean, basically that's what I do for a living is a lot of mold remediation okay. and restoring buildings so that they can be rebuilt. So if we called on you, you would be available to work with Correct. us? Correct. Thank so, you. Ken, the condition we have there is the south wall of the building. We took the sheetrock off it, and it is, the studs are rotten right off. Yeah. Now, I don't think it tested high on the airborne mold test that you did because it was behind, it encapsulated. It was behind 6 mil poly. Right. And, and therefore, it was encapsulated until we opened it up. Yeah, the one thing about this type of testing and any testing is, you know, a lot of it's about discovery. You're not going to be able to go in a room or a, a building and tell you where the mold is exactly. There's no equipment, there's no testing out there that's going to say the mold's in that corner, the mold's straight ahead, and the mold's over there. But the rooms, it'll identify. Typically, what's going to happen is the molds that have the higher uh, airborne concentrations are going to show up in this testing, and it gives you a starting point to start looking at. Do we have a problem that's affecting the indoor air quality? Because everything's about how is the indoor air quality affecting me? Is there higher elevations of mold spores that are causing me to get sick or anybody that's coming in this building to be sick because that's about what you breathe in is how how mostly everything affects you is what you're breathing in so you know now what you're doing now is opening things up. like I say you just can't you know you can't tell exactly where every little bit of mold is if somebody tells you they can do that I, I've never seen that technology and, and we're always trying to keep up on everything that's the, the best out there so that we can you know, do you uh, have a machine that you can drill a hole in a wall and stick a probe in and check and see if there's mold in the cavity? The problem is when you do that, you're going to overload the system with particles. Okay. So when you drill a hole and you try to do something like that, you've just created a lot of particles, and particles can overload the system. So, so we've got this building over here that's probably 20% demoed. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe 20% of the exterior walls are demoed and opened up. Is there any service of value to the city that you could provide us by taking a look at it and giving a recommendation? The problem on an outside wall is there's too many variables to give an accurate whether there's mold in that wall or not. You're 
your best, and the I open always tell wall, obvious, but the other walls you don't. My my best. Uh, uh, my best opinion is, is that if you want to know what's in it, it's a deconstructive investigation. You have to open it up to find out, do you have a problem, and is how big is the problem if you do have a problem. Testing indoor air quality is a great tool, but it's not a final tool. You know, you're not going to find all the mold and, and where it all is. Okay, so if we have a building in this sandy conditions, you're familiar with this country, right? Yep. And it's a slab on grade building with no water issues, I mean you got a roof and you got drainage, but no outside water coming into it. And if, if it's a slab on grade, have you ever seen it where mold will migrate up through the concrete and become a hazard in the living space of the building? The problem is, is before recent, tech, or re, recent um, ordinances or, or rulings is that when you built let's say slab on grade, there wasn't a vapor barrier underneath, so moisture is going to migrate. Wet goes to dry. So if you're, if you're living in a wet area where your ground is more wet, it's going to migrate up through the concrete. It's going to migrate to the sill plates of the, of the contractor or the homeowner, put their drywall directly on the, on the floor. It's going to act as a wick. It all draws up into the, into the studs, into the wall cavities and all that type. Of, so there's a lot of variables that go into that type of thing, and that's where you know, when, you, when I do these inspections, I'm looking for all those type of things. I'm looking at the sill plates, I'm looking at the baseboards, I'm looking at the walls. Anything that I see over 37 years that I've done this, I know where moisture goes. I'm trying to see if the typical areas of moisture where mold is going to collect is there, number one, vis or visibly. And number two is, you know, the technology is trying to use this technology to determine, especially the airborne quality, air, airborne uh, concentrations is do we have a problem in a room and when like I talked about when I go around a room with that insoscope I'm also looking at where the hits are for the mold so if I'm going along these outside walls and I get to this outside wall here and I have more hits along this wall I know where to start looking typically all outside walls are going to have it more than an inside wall uh, so you know the technology is very good but it's not the only tool in the toolbox you have to use all your other senses and all your other experiences to find. So do you think you have any value to us to have you look and give an opinion of the building? I mean, obviously, the firemen are concerned that there's mold issues there. They want to tear it down because they don't want a house on it. From a conservative side of things, I would like to keep going with our project as planned to save the taxpayers money. But at the end of the day, I don't, we don't want to build something that is not a habitable area for the guys. I mean, you know, there's, that goes without right. saying. Yep. The thing is, is like I say, when you're talking about these outside walls and you're talking you've already found uh, moisture that's been in the walls and deteriorated the walls, that's things that the only way you find that stuff is you have to open up the walls and take a look. And my opinion or my um, expertise would be once it's exposed, I could tell you what we could do for that to do if there's possibility for doing remediation. I mean, we do a lot of different tasks. Uh, I can give my opinion, and I always, the opinion I give is, is one that I stand behind because I don't want it to come back on my company or my name later on. So if it's something that I look at and I don't think it's, gonna, it's worth remediating, I'm going to tell you that up front because I don't the, want... The commitment from the city has been if we discover an area, we totally remove it and replace mm -hmm. it. It's not clean it and cut right. it. It's get rid of it and replace it. So yep. That's been our... What our goal is. And any time so you can do it. source removal, that's the best way. But yeah. sometimes you can't do that when it's a structural component of the building. You know, when it's, a, you know, it's something that can't be removed. And that's where I can come in and give my opinion of what can be done, if anything. Yeah, well, I don't see a condition on that building that couldn't be removed and replaced. I mean, I think there's everything. Can I greatly appreciate it? Does anybody else have a question for him while he's here? Because we're not going to keep him here all night. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay, now I suppose, Andy, this is an update on the fire hall construction project. I guess, are you going to do that? I mean, you got some stuff, or you left us with a bunch of stuff? Yeah. Um, Andy Pickard with High Tech Construction. Um, yeah, I guess last uh, council meeting, um, 
we were just asked to dig a little deeper into putting some pricing together in regards to um, basically what Ken said is open up some of those walls and figure out if we have mold issues throughout the entire building. Um, but you haven't done that. You don't have plans of doing that to date. We, I, as I understood it, we were just getting pricing and generating that pricing, which we provided okay. um, for review, and so that everyone can make an educated decision before we commit more cost into that into the structure. So, so I don't know. do we want to go through this pricing? However, you guys want to do it. If we do it, do we want to put it on the screen? Do you have a copy that you give to TJ? You can put it on the yep. screen. I think we should spend a little bit of time on it. No, I believe your I believe your direction at the last meeting was to go back and give us a budget and a generous budget to correct any areas that you think might be a problem. That's correct. That's the way I understood as well. So I believe since then, you and Mike England have been over there and done an inspection on the building. Correct. We had uh, our foreman, um, Tim Gaden with High Tech, uh, Mike England, uh, architect with WSN, or with Seth, and myself. And what did you inspect while you were there? Um, we opened up some of the walls that we hadn't looked behind before. Um, Apparatus Bay, we opened up some of the FRP and exposed some of the areas where we had known water infiltration from the, um, that we knew from the exterior side where water was getting in. Um, and we, you, if you verified that there's water? Um, yeah, you know, some of the do overhead door headers had a lot of rot on the outside. Um, so we wanted to check those areas on the inside. Um, you could see that there was water getting through there. It wasn't obviously as rotted on the interior side as it was on the outside, but you could see that there was water coming. Was on its way. Um, FRP, we exposed that. You know, some areas had, you know, around some of the overhead doors, there was a little bit of surface mold on drywall behind the FRP. Um, so nothing in comparison to that south wall, um, but it, there was, was some surface mold as well. Um, we also got in the attic space and looked through the attic. We walked um, in, into two different attic holes, two, one above the apparatus bay and then uh, one above the, uh, the old city admin area. And uh, we just walked through it and, and trying to figure out the condition of the roof and the sheathing underneath. Um, we were also trying to determine, um, we had heard that there was potentially um, Underneath the steel roof, there was some sleepers and then an ad, or, uh, um, Shingle? shingled roof, asphalt roof. And we determined that there was no asphalt shingles. There was uh, a ice and water shield and uh, tar paper. And then sleepers on that and then a steel roof over that. So, the, uh, so at the end of your crawl around <coughs> up there, what condition would you say the roof is in? Um, walking through it again, crawling from rafter to rafter with the flashlight. Um, we did spend some time up there though. Um, we didn't see any evidence of any leaking or water coming in up there. So, um, How about the, the structural integrity of the roof trusses themselves? What did you find with that? Yeah, we also checked that um, just to, to figure out you know, the spacing. Um, all of the roof trusses were in good condition, two foot on center, so it was Everything structurally looked good as well. Was two foot on center a bit of a surprise to you to see that on that roof? Um, as a contractor, no. Um, we'd expect that it'd be two foot on center. Really? So on some a of the barn type building, you would. On, on a structure like that, yeah. So it's not four foot or six foot on center. Correct, it's two which foot. is it's better residential than residential building type construction. Yeah. Okay. And you didn't see any sign of any water, any. No, everything we saw looked good. Everything was in good shape. So when you're, and, and I'm assuming Mike England agrees with your opinion, you guys are up there together, would you say that the roof system is in good condition? From what we could tell from the underside, everything looked like it was in good condition. Um, you walk on the top side, you know, there's a lot of ice damage um, from some of the uh, ice heaving and that, that has pushed some stuff around, a lot of flashing, a lot of trim.
that needs to be straightened up. I don't know if that's an opportunity with, with the insurance claim side that some of that can be looked at through there, but there was some damage on that roof from the ice. Okay. But it's all correctable damage. It's Correct. It's moving around. And the building has not been maintained very well, obviously. Um, we did also investigate um, the apparatus bay, the, I'll call it the old part of the building, did not have any vapor barrier in the attic space. So that was a concern as well. So I'm sorry, which part is the old part? Um, I'll call it everything south, or I'm sorry, everything north of the admin area from the corridor north. So the council chamber is north? Correct. Okay. And on the admin side of it, did it seem to have a vapor barrier there? Yes. Okay. Okay, the construction of the building, so the trusses are okay, the roof's okay? Yep. Right? Uh, the exterior walls, are they all 2 by 6 Did you get that far to know that? Yes, everything's 2 by 6 on that. Because at the last meeting, one of the CHIPS guys came in and said that this the structural building techniques that were used on that building were primitive or, or something. But in a nutshell, isn't the construction techniques used on that building very similar to what the construction techniques you used on this building are? Um, it appears so, um, but again, we're opening up, we didn't open up a huge area in, in the garage. Everything in the admin side, the newer construction is, you know, Again, just two by six framing. Um, we didn't open up enough in the apparatus bay to really get a good yeah, look well, as far as that. I gotta believe that's probably a pole barn, but yeah. Okay, but I mean, there's a lot of critics saying that it's a poor building, built poorly. Now the flashing, I mean, there's conditions that are certainly poor that, that can be corrected. And I'm sorry to bore everybody with this, but I've got a little bit of a passion because we had a building committee that spent about six months on this project put a lot of time in. And we all in agreement, the council, the fire chief, everybody was in agreement in building this building and remodeling that building. Now we've got a couple issues in there that have come up, significant, but correctable. And they're talking about abandoning the original, tearing it down, and building a new fire hall for two to two and a half million more dollars. And we're doing it in a COVID pandemic environment that I want to make sure we're doing the right thing for the, the people in Cross Lake. So I feel like I'm going on and on and on about this, but I've got an interest. <coughs> so did you, are you going to put that spreadsheet up there? I lost my time, huh? So can you go up to the top, the beginning of it, TJ? I kind of want to walk through and explain these numbers. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm trying to recall this. But the, the agreed signed contract for the remodel of the fire hall is $1,298,000, correct? That's correct. The $69,000 below that is a, I think what happened when we were getting close to fine tuning this, Chip, and you correct me. But we are trying to keep the number under a million three. And so Chip and myself, and I believe it was you, Andy, Correct. agreed there are, there are some elements in that thing that either Chip could source himself, get a deal on it, get something, or we would address it at a later time. So we pulled that out to get it down to 1298. Correct. Is yep. that correct, Chip? We also removed some items and uh, some of these. These items that here that's recognized in the 69,000 were items that the city was going to source. So we were trying source. hard to keep our budget to what we were trying to do. So then we get into the demo. We get into the south wall. That's the wall with all the brick on it when you drive by the building. They tore the sheetrock out and you know we could, we've could we seen the pictures. The wall was in very bad shape. So our remedy for it is to totally remove the brick, totally remove the wall, throw it in the dumpster, build a new wall, new insulation, new siding, and extend the roof two feet over that wall the way it should have been originally, and it would have saved all this heartache. So that's what the 288 <clears throat> is. Go on to the next calendar, overhead doors. There are eight overhead doors in the fire hall, and they all appear to be rotten. 
based on poor flashing and poor, poor building techniques at the time. So to remedy that, we're going to basically rebuild both those walls, right? The, yes, we would, we would take, um, we would shore up the the uh, headers on those, um, tear well, them out, and then the fra wall, reframe in. <clears throat> yeah, we w we won't frame the whole entire gable wall. This is just for reframing those those headers. Okay, at those so that's twenty five six. <clears throat> Next category is a mechanical pump room, and this is going to get a little sensitive because everything that's in the mechanical pump room is visual when you walk into that room. It's a wet environment, and, and so in our inspections, walking through the building, didn't high tech know that there was going to be some repairs needed to that room? I mean, was there no allowance in the original $1.3 million estimate to go in there and do any repairs to that room? Um, well, we were going to probably re-drywall it, but not tear the entire wall down because the walls are rotten. Okay. And you deem the walls rotten and need to be removed? That's the assumption, right? The, all these numbers are, are budget numbers. Um, yep. Again, at the end of the day, we'll have to price it through the Gordian process. So to me, you know, those three are legitimate, identified areas of problem to date. Those three, they add up to, you know, fifty, sixty, five thousand dollars or something. Now we go down to the, 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 from there on down, I believe is what you're projecting to possibly be problem areas. Is that true? Yes, exactly. There, there's, there's a lot of assumptions made in, in these so numbers. So all the, all the windows and doors in the building, the, the flashings were improperly or not put in at all. So you're assuming the headers are probably all bad. And the wall sheeting is all right. Yeah, um, around a lot of the over or man doors and some of that, um, whether it's from salt use or people kicking their shoes off on the siding, um, there's a lot of uh, rot. You're comfortable that ten thousand bucks should be plenty adequate to cover that. It, yeah, it's mostly for around the man doors and cutting in some of that. Yep. Okay, the next one is expose and replace all interior and exterior walls of the building. And that, as Ken said when he was here, that's what we need to do to open the walls up to see what kind of condition they're in. Correct, after that's, finding the, the mold that yeah. we know today. So we need to open them up and see what's in there. Correct. That's 113,000 bucks. Yep. And, and that's remove and replace, correct? That's correct. So new insulation, new sheetrock, okay. Next one, so the vapor barrier is only from the hallway north. How about over the fire hall in that attic? Has that got a vapor barrier above the garage? No, that does not. No, so nothing north has got a vapor barrier. Correct. Nothing, so as far as we could tell, nothing north had a okay, vapor barrier. Okay, so for $98,000, your remedy is to go in there, vacuum all the insulation, go up there with a spray foam machine, put three inches of foam over the thing, which creates a vapor barrier and reapply the blown insulation that you took out, right? That's correct. Yeah, okay, so that's 98. The concrete slab moisture mitigation, I would like to look into that, but what you're gonna do is put a coating over all the concrete so that nothing can come through it. Exactly. 35,000 yeah. bucks. The mold mitigation, the last line on it, $50,000. You know, if we remove and expose and open everything up in the building that could possibly have mold in it, I can't imagine we would need fifty thousand dollars in there. Is that correct? Yeah, this it's an allowance. Um, we again, I did have Surf Pro come over and take a look at it. Um, yeah, I know if, if Surf, Surf would have known Service Master was there, we could have had had Ken over there. But uh, we had Surf Pro there. They looked at it. They they gave a proposal, um, a budget to do some mitigation as well as um, at the end of the day doing a test to make sure that. When we turn this over, um, everyone's yeah. Everyone's uh, so, but clear I mean, the mold. test that they did last time was five hundred and fifty bucks. So it's going to be twenty five hundred bucks, or whatever it's going to be. But it's not going to be fifty thousand. Yeah, I guess that again, it's an it's an allowance. It's an allowance. So, depending on what we find out, you know, on those ones. So if you add all those numbers up, one of the spreadsheets said it was a million seven. I think there's a hundred thousand in engineering costs that we've already put into the building. So it's what was that, Eighteen, one million eight hundred and forty-one thousand dollars you have in cost to remodel the building. Correct, if you had the design fees in there, that would be and what, what we And out of that, we've got about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars invested into it now? Um, the hundred thousand in the design, and then, you know, I think last council we were about 
$25,000 in cost. And is that to it to date in full? Um, I haven't went through the exact numbers on that, but it's, it's close, yes. Okay, so we're 125 then. So that brings it down to about a million seven twenty-five from this day moving forward to complete it with all the possible issues taken care of. That's our hope. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still a renovation. Okay. Um, you know, I'd like to think we're going to fix all the problems, but that's never necessarily the reality. We're going to fix all the known issues and everything we come well, across. Well, I think if we got the whole thing exposed and opened up, and we've already put money in there to cover them back up and seal them up again, yep. I can't really imagine what else there could be, but right. well taken, you know. Okay. So that's from this day moving forward, it's a million seven to finish the remodel project, and that is about 16,000 square feet in its entirety, I believe. Right? Correct. Yes, and, and one thing to note um, the ambulance garage on the very north end, we would not be touching any of that portion of the building. Right. Yeah. That's a new, new construction yeah. very recently. That's so. Aside, above, and beyond. So it's a million seven to finish the remodel project that we got going. So now we go into the new building. Uh, if, don't be afraid to interrupt me if anybody's got anything to say. I'm kind of going off here. But. The new building is 15,454 square feet. Does that include the mezzanine up on the second floor? No, it does not. It's footprint. Okay, so is there a square footage price? I mean, in residential housing, there is a square footage cost for anything. It's not as much as the main, but there's a cost for it. Yeah, and, and uh, the budget that we put together um, in our proposal, I don't know if you want to pull that up, I did identify that total budget at 3610000 includes the mezzanine cost in that. Okay, well, two weeks ago or something, I asked you about what is the cost of construction for this new type of building, and yep. at the time you told me it was about 250 bucks a foot. Yeah, that we hadn't, hadn't been had a chance at that time to, you know, we saw the, the footprint, I think the day of or the day before, or, you know, very recently. Um, so in that time, council asked us to, to dig into it a little bit further and, and get some real good numbers. So um, we had a, an individual in our office run through our estimator and, and take a look at it, um, put real numbers together. We got you know a precast contractor involved in getting their help, um, steel contractor um, getting their help with the steel pricing. So we got some good real numbers. Um, and then a lot of the other numbers are based on past projects and experience from and a those comparable contract. And numbers are waffling on either side of 225 a square foot. Yeah, and I, th I think we're, I don't know exactly where our square foot number is, about two, 220 ish or something like that, um, is where we ended up okay. after, so after I, putting the price to it. If I take 15,454 and times it times 225, I come up with 3,477,000 bucks. Yeah, correct. And then we don't have a mezzanine in there, so, I mean, there's got to be an allowance for that. Well, we, we priced it, again, we didn't do a square foot price on this. We, we went by each division and went through and put a number to each division. So this, this budget includes the mezzanine. So and it's, that includes it's, the engineering costs. And then this, we also saw our, our construction number, and I don't have it on hand right now, but was around that 3.4 3 million. And then we added in the 5.5%, 6 um, for the design fees yep. on top of that. And okay. then that's, that's included in the budget of the 3.6. It, it includes all the demo in the budget. That is correct. I mean, and all the site work. Yep. And any paving or reapproaches or anything. Yep. Um, just, we I mean, are I'm a builder and it seems like you're piling a lot of stuff on that three twenty five building cost problem. And so what I'm trying to do is whatever this number ends up being, I want it to be a real number at the end of the day. Definitely. Okay. And it I just feel like it's low. Sure. Um so. yeah, I mean we, we went through it. Um I reviewed it with Mitch Fearbin, the owner of high tech and um it's a real number. I mean, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's, okay. it's still a budget number, but it's, it's a real budget number. So in a nutshell, we're talking about spending $1.7 million or $3.6 million on the project. Square footage, approximately the same size, right? Okay, I'm done. Anybody's got any questions? I think we could look at the sheet here. I, my big concern is that 
and I noticed that the, there was a comment, the roof is, you thought the roof would be good for 25 years. I'm looking at the life of the building. I'm looking down the road quite a ways. I'm not looking just to get this thing fixed so we're back into it. But 50 years has been a goal for a precast concrete building like an old church. And if we can get a building to last 50 years, that means that there isn't going to be a council in any of our lifetime, <clears throat> I'm looking around here, that's going to have to deal with this again. Now if we spend a million, 841, which is the total on that spreadsheet, and we go 20 years, then what, what are people going to have to do? Are they going to have to spend another million? Are they going to have to tear the building down? I would guess, looking at inflation, that if we spent money on that, on a new building at 3.6 million, if you had to spend that in 25 years, do the same building in 25 years, that thing would probably be seven to eight million dollars with inflation, the way things have been going. So, in my world, you, you grab that number now, interest rates are low, and I've got a bunch of other things here that I can talk about, but I, I just can't see putting any more money into a building that's, we're gonna gut the thing. And the floor is a concern for me for mold. And I understand painting it. And I might put you on the spot a little bit, but when I read your letter, I kind of read in between the lines. And I was, I was just wondering, would high tech rebuild that building or do you tear it down? Um, that's a very tough question for you to answer. answer. Um, you don't you. have to answer that, but that's. Appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the, I, I mean, that's my gut feeling. I think I. Uh, like Jerry Norgard said, we owe something to the employees of the city and to the residents and to the visitors of Cross Lake to have a building that's operational. Another big concern I have has been brought up by Kevin. What happens if we rebuild a building and a tornado comes and it ruins all of the trucks that we have in there? It will really be in a bad way. The other aspect, a new building, from what I remember on the drawings, we could leave the truck bay because as far as I know right now, there are no costs in any of this to send trucks to heated buildings all over Cross Lake. Trucks are one thing, then you've got your respirators and your equipment to fill them. You walk back there, all of the firemen have their outfits hanging up. Where are we going to go with all, where are we going to do with all that stuff? And then what do we do when we have a fire call and stuff scattered all over Cross Lake? I mean, that, it, it doesn't make sense. I, I'm in it for the long haul, and I understand it's money, but everything's money today. And I like to see the city have something that they're proud of, and something that would last for 50 years, and it's done right. And that's kind of where I am on this whole thing. So. Okay, thanks, Dave. How do you feel about Jeff? My view is that people talk about Cross Lake and whatever we're going to be when we grow up. I think the COVID crisis has made it clear that we have grown up. We are now a destination for people to visit and enjoy, and we need to plan on that with people who tell me we've got extra people around that we don't usually have around. Real estate is doing very well. Interest rates are low. My concern is trying to house fire equipment that is now very expensive in a 25-year-old wooden building. I think the idea of being able to make a commercial-grade building and use that for a fire department is where we should go. So I'm going to come down the side of trying to get a new building. Thank you. Aaron? I think if we're going to go with this, uh, either way we're going to go. We have to table it today, and we have to put more thought into it, because I, um, I think there's more questions that need to be asked, and there's more information to be gathered before we make a rash decision. I, want it, I don't see, I'm looking down here at, at uh, budget estimates and stuff, and uh, bonds and so forth. I don't see how it affects our business community because people that have businesses in this city are going to get whammied on their business and also on their home. So I think we need to gather some input from them. I think we need to, to slow our emotions down here a whole bunch and uh, make, make sound decisions, whichever way it goes. 
That's not my concern. It just needs to be sound with logic that's attached to it. And I'm hearing way too many emotions tonight. Okay, I'm going to summarize my thoughts on it too. Is that we had a building committee that spent months working on this thing. Chip, you were part of it. There was 22 people of us that were on that. We all came to an agreement on a plan. We dug into the, we did this portion of it, went great. We dug into the remodel portion of it and we came across a couple hiccups. And it gives an excuse to tear it down and build a new city hall. Because the people are the ones that approved it on the first one, and actually they were quite respectful of us for taking the time we took to develop that plan, I think that we should at minimal put this out on a referendum, on the vote, and let the people decide which way to go. So if, if we're going to continue to be stuck here at this, that's where I think we should go. And I actually am going to make that a motion. That if we're stuck on this, I think we should put it to a referendum for the voters to decide what to do. Can we put up your, the spreadsheet that you worked up? Yeah, TJ, go ahead and put that back up. It's the bottom part of that same page you had up earlier. You know, and when I did this, I like high tech. Andy was asked to, to put some high level numbers together. You know, what would it look like? Uh, go, we want to some, some real high level numbers to look at. What happens if we change direction or we stay the course? Um, on the, the build new is, is the left hand column on there and the, re, and the remodel is uh, the middle column, but go down to the bottom of that. Right there. Uh, Mike, can I get you to pull your, your mask off so I can hear you better? Sure. Thank you. So what I did is I said, what did we project for a budget? And you know, we had a million three in big round numbers and then another $100,000 for, for the engineering part of it. And then I said, what didn't we budget? And I was just trying to get to the totals of the, new co of the, of the remodel versus rebuild. And I did not take into account any work done on the building, because I think in high tech's design, um, they had mentioned in their spreadsheet it was about $315,000 if they had to replace the roof. Somewhere there it was. Right. Right there. Yeah, um, that's what it was. Yeah, 315000 And I didn't, I, I didn't do any discounting for the time value of money. I just said, we've spent some money, and you know, I had to put my finance guy hat on and say, how are we going to pay for this? Because at the end of the day, we have to write a check for this to whomever, whether it's a new building or remodel the old one. So I looked at it from the standpoint as, as if we took one path versus the other, how much are we going to write checks for when we're done with the project, and how would we pay for it? So um, since July 31st, be that 93,000 number right under the cash or bonds, I said, in both cases, if you're going to just stick with the remodel based on the current budget numbers, you'd just pay cash for it. It wouldn't make sense to go out and issue a bond for less than a half a million dollars given the reserves that we currently have. It just wouldn't make sense to do that. And, I, I, and then I said, if we take away the money that we've already spent, take the rest of our budget, I'm going to need about uh, $2.3 million plus some bond issuance costs to come up with a bond of about $2.5 million if the city decides to do this through a referendum, as the mayor suggested, or you could do it through a capital plan, or you could do it through your EDA. There's several options. Or you could just spend your current reserves and, and pay cash for it. If you were to go and issue bonds, right now rates are on that size of an issue are between one and a half and two percent for a net effective interest rate is what I'm seeing. We have a very good bond rating. If we spend all of our cash, that could change. Um, bond raters judge you on how you make decisions and your ability to pay back the debt that you've issued. So if you were looking at, and I just did this very high level at two percent, if you're going two and a half million, ten years at two percent, you're at about 278000 so call it $280,000 for a payment, an annual payment for 10 years. 15 years gets you to 195, 20 years to 152. Now the interesting thing is um, I'm also working on the budget. And if I look at the projections I've received from the state and from the county, um, we're generating some, if we keep our tax rate the same as we did last year, we generate 
almost enough cash within about eight or nine thousand dollars to do a twenty year bond at today's rates without really doing anything so you really have to look at where you want to spend your money and how what how you want to invest in it and because to mr shrubs comment what's this going to look like at the end of the life of the building projected life if it's remodeled versus building new so i heard the terms conservative play on residential versus a commercial and and this is just an excuse to get a new building i don't look at it that way i look at it as you're investing in your future your the next council won't have to worry about it for at least 50 years and so is it really a bad thing to do to build new? Pretty profound Maybe not. statement to say at least 50 years out they won't have to think about it. I mean, that's a long ways out. So is 20, Mr. Mayor. Well, it's that's plenty far. Out. So would you yeah. agree that after 20 years you'd need to revisit this discussion and put up another building? Well, I, that's that's arguable. You know, I don't know. I, hopefully you'd take better care of it and it'd probably last 30 years. So, so and then the other thing we want to look at is is ongoing maintenance and durability of the building. You know, there's quite a bit of, I don't know what those costs would be, but I'm assuming they'd be quite different. If you look up, can you push that up a little bit? In both cases, if we look at the estimated total cost with or without the roof replacement, the roof replacement is really what throws the model out of whack here because if you're looking at a estimated cost per year with no roof replacement, over 50 years, you're at about $72,000. You're at about $74,000 with the remodel. Um, they're essentially the same. The only thing different is the life. And again, I, I haven't discounted these for, for depreciation or the time value of money because we know both of those will impact us. You know, we've got a cost missing, which is where you're going to house all of the trucks, the gear. That's not a line item on there. I don't know what that would cost, but we're not accounting for that. No. And again, a referendum is one way to do it. Uh, you could do a capital plan like we did for the building we're sitting in. That's still a doable, that's still an option for you. So there, you do have options. Is Every place I walk in this town and we talk about spending that much money on a fire hall, I have never once, other than the fire guys and Jerry, first time tonight, had a positive, yeah, let's spend another four, and four million bucks and build a new fire hall. I, I just haven't heard it. So I feel like we have to put it to the people. I think, feel like they got to make the choice. I don't want to be, my legacy does not want to be the guy that came in here and spent $20 million and they left after two years no. without them being a part of the decision process. Well, again, my role was to provide the information so you can all make an informed decision. Thank you. I'm going to open it up to any public comment on any of this. Does you any? Want to get a second on your motion? Yeah, I know. Okay, uh, yeah, I got a motion to put it on the referendum. Does anybody want to second it? Yeah. Can I ask a question? What does that do with where we are today? Well, it just puts it on hold. Or? Till after the election. Till next year? Well, till after the 1st of November. It's been on hold for two months now. We can't decide on anything. We're a long ways away from each other. Right. And you kind of be like on the, the, this year's ballot? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're just going to have to board it up and lock it up until next year. That's fine. So I got a motion. Is there a second? Motion dies. Okay. Who's got another good idea? If anybody wants to say anything, come on up. I think that's Joe. Yo, Joe Chase, 334 three, four Duckwood Trail. Just got a question for you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. You got family, right? Yep. Would you put them in that building and let them live in there? Not in its current condition, I wouldn't. Who would you have two years ago? Because these firefighters, they're my family. Yeah. They have families going home, too. They don't want to be in that. Yeah. Would you put your family in it? Well, I'd probably live in places like that, not knowing. Knowing two years ago, would you put your family in there? No. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to say? 
Come on up, Don. Hi. It's been a little hard to hear back there, but the gist of it is Don Craig, Cross Lake, Back Doll Road, 14691. Yeah. Love the fire department. Love the police department. You guys do an amazing job. But that's not what we're here to do is to decide whether you're good, bad, or whether your families would be there or not. What we're trying to decide is we made a commitment a few months ago to the residents to build this building and then to remodel the fire department in a 20-some percent problem that's arisen, you're giving me a shell game to tear it down and build a new one. That's not what you told me you were going to do. And in that regards, I disagree with you. You have a remodeling project, stick to it. Make the adjustments and get it done correctly. Then the families that are our fire department will still be safe in that building because you'll be getting rid of all the problems that exist. So I think just stick to your guns on it. Thank you, Doc. We don't need anything bigger than what we already have. Anybody else have an opinion? Okay, well, who's got a good idea? Oh, we got one more coming up. Peter Graves, 14131 Sugarloaf Road in Cross Lake. Can I get you to lower your mask so I can hear you, please? Certainly. Thank you. Um, I just have a question. I'm not in construction. I'm not in rebuilding at all. Um, but from what I'm hearing is there was water issues in the building that caused all of these problems. And the water's going to get in either from the roof, from the walls, or from the f flooring. Um, I'm hearing tonight again that the roof isn't necessarily been the problem. I'm hearing it might have been some of the walls and the door frames. Um, but I also was hearing last meeting and tonight that the floor doesn't have a proper barrier and that it's wicked up in some places through the cement slab. I don't know if that's been shown, but it's possible. It, it's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. My concern or confusion is I also heard that you can do some um, things right now to cover the flooring and, and protect it, but you're still going to have some stud walls that you're not able to get underneath and put a barrier down. And so there's still going to be places there where the, the cement flooring could wick water up and create problems for you down the road. And I'm not sure how you solve that problem. So. That was my only question to whomever is working on the, the remodel and or the, the rebuild, is, is if the water's still getting in there, are you going to have a problem 10 years from now, 15 years from now, uh, because you, have, you can't put a barrier across the whole slab? I would step out on a really small limb and say that that wouldn't be a significant problem. Okay. Andy, do you want to comment to that or not? Yeah, um, definitely a concern, but uh, you know, the building has green treated plates around the perimeter, so um, you know, susceptible or prevents that from rotting. So, um, and, and any floor coating would seal to the plate, and therefore correct, it would like seal that. to the face of the plate, and then the rest of the plates are all and there green treated. Isn't so. Water coming up through the floor. None that was inspected. All the all the plates are in good condition, are not rotten. So that we've witnessed so far. So. Okay, anybody else got a comment, please? Come on up. Now's the time to do it. You can see where we're at. Uh, Mitch Fearbin with High Tech Construction. I'm just kind of with Andy here tonight. And uh, Mr. Shrupp asked a question on what High Tech would do or what our thought process is. As the owner of High Tech, I figured I should just give my two cents. So. What we've tried to do tonight is give you a list of all the costs and options that you have. And so Andy did a nice job presenting that. The truth of the matter is, you guys put a lot of time in as a building committee. 
And we've found out a lot more, 20% more costs to date now. But if you guys, looking back, six months, if we said the budget's 1.8, would have you then move forward with the remodel? Or would we maybe go down this path of a new build? And so, as a builder, remodels are never any fun. There's a lot of added costs. In my opinion, it's much easier to build brand new. You're gonna get a lot longer building, or life of the building. You're going to uh, have a lot less stress. It's gonna go up faster and a lot less change orders. With all that's gone on here in the last two months for high tech, to be put in the spot to now remodel this building, we're gonna be under a large microscope. We're gonna to wanna to try to build this thing perfectly. We've got questions about water coming up through floors under walls. So if you want our true honest opinion of high tech construction, what we think would be best for the city of Cross Lake, I would have to say build a brand new building for 50 years. Thank you, Mitch. And I'm just going to be honest. If you're going to spend the money for 3.6 million <coughs> or 1.8 on a wood stud building, build a new building. Thanks Thank for you. Your opinion. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, I'm not hearing any resolutions to this issue. I don't know if we should just table it till Christmas or what? We kind of been kicking this around for quite some time. I think I put it to the people well, as an idea, but nobody supported that. Well, you did have a, a discussion about a small group of five, or at least that was the... Could you come to any recommendation with five people? You know, the committee, you mentioned getting the committee back together and talking. Who's going to pick the group of five? Can I pick them? I mean, I don't you know, know. Because that, if Kevin and Chip are on it and Dan Hagerston, that's going to be a committee. That's going to go in a direction. If I pick the committee, it's going to, be, it's going to go in another direction. So who's going to pick the committee then to represent the people of the city across the lake? Then there won't be a committee. Yeah. So how are you going to do that? Anybody else have another good idea how we should resolve this? I have a question for Aaron. What additional information or discussions would you recommend we do as a council um, before making a decision? I think they need to bring the committee back together as quickly as possible. Have and it's an entirety, the whole committee? Well, whoever's willing to come back, there's yeah. a difference. Well, I bet you a lot of them would come back. But, uh, okay. And schedule a meeting very shortly after that a one-time meeting, get their opinion, and move on. And I think council needs to be represented at that meeting. The council was part of the committee. No, I, I understand, but I, I don't want people take, any of us taking a step back from a shore. That's what I'm getting at. We all need to be there. We need to hear, we all need to be there, and we need to hear what gets said by the committee and then we need to come back here, and then I think we need to make a decision. I've got questions about how complete interior-wise is this new building. I've got stuff like that, and I, I'm sure Andy can answer those questions at that committee meeting. I'm sure you'd be happy to. So do you want to make a motion that that's what we do? <coughs> Sir, sure. But I want the committee back together in a week, and then the following week we come back and we hold a special meeting. That's part of my motion. So your motion is to reform the original building committee next week, get as many of them back as we can, discuss the options on the table, bring it back to the council the following week. Correct. And I'll second that. Can we get dates on there? Hmm. Next Monday, if you want this. Sure, I'm fine with Monday. I'm not going to be here the 24th, so that would be a great time for you to have it. Okay. <laughs> so the 17th for the committee? Yep. Well, 
I, why do we have to wait till the next Monday? Why can't we come in on the 20th? Just doing what this motion right, is. but I mean, yeah. is there a reason we can't come right back in on the 20th on Thursday? Uh, no, I just, I, I mean, I'm the, saying next week The committee week I want to should meet. put a huh? motion forward. The committee should. Okay, I said next week is what I said. So if the 20th is next week, fine. No, oh, so Monday is the 17th of next week. Okay. Now, we got to hope that the committee can get together, but well, so if the committee can get together on the 17th, then the council would meet on the 20th, which is Thursday. Oh, I see where, okay, council. Well, I mean, unless you want to have it while I'm not here, it'll probably go a lot quicker. The, the, the 20th is fine with me. I don't care. Okay, so let's fine. try that, Char, I guess. The huh? 17th and 20th. But as many as the committee that can come together, we come together and have a frank discussion. So what are they going to discuss? The options, just what we've been discussing. Let's show them Money. the cost sheet and everything? Yeah, yeah. they get all okay. this information. They get information additional from high tech. Right. Addition, we can tour the facility if they want, whatever they want to do, but try to come I, up I, with I, I, I'm seeing something from Brad, so what? Just nothing big, but just I would amend the motion and get amend the second so we do the date and time like Char's doing because we've got to call a special meeting and you can do it all at the same time. So just, you might as well set the calendar because she has to get it going right away if it's that fast. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm trying to get time in so, here. But I, you should amend the motion and vote on it again with the ac actual times of both meetings. Okay. So do you want to do that? Yes, that's my motion. And I accept the amendment. Okay, we need dates and times. No, she still needs the dates and times. Monday? We need to do August? this and then set the dates and times. No, no in that motion, in that's agreement. Oh, okay. I agree on the 17th, we meet, the committee meets, 17th, here at City Hall or at the community center? Here. Here at City Hall, and on the 20th, the council meets okay. to make a, a time. decision. A time. Time of day. Oh, uh, uh, 17th, God, I don't know. We got working people two, that two, are on that committee. Two o'clock in the afternoon? We usually not. I won't make either one, I won't make either one, I'll be gone. Uh, Chip just said that we normally met at 8 in the morning. Whatever is accommodating to the committee, I guess, and I'm not sure. I mean, somebody throw out a time. I don't, I don't care. Let's say 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's go. All right, 2 o'clock. See what happens. If it's in the morning, would you be able to make it, Dave? No, I'm going to be in the Twin Cities for at least the and whole week. Council meeting? I think in the evening. So everybody can come back without affecting their job. Are you going to have it with just three members? I'm sorry. Are you, are you going to have the meeting with just three members? Or no, because Dave's not here. So oh, no, I want four <coughs> members here. Yeah. Hopefully I'll be able to come back the following week. Monday the following week? I hope, yes. Well, okay, so I'll be gone. 17 is 7 is 24th. Can you zoom? Yeah, thank you. I don't, uh, I don't know from the hospital. I don't know that that would work so good. Oh, no, we won't, we won't count on that then. No, no. Can we try for the 20th and if not zoom on the 20th? No, um, that's next week's all hospital, so. Oh, I, I, for the council meeting I'm talking about. 24th I might be back. That's a Monday. Oh, 24th. I'm sorry, I said What you meant? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 24th, I'm not going to be here. I don't want to zoom in for this meeting. It's a little too important. Yep. I'm going to be You're gone right. the 23rd, 24th, 25th, and 26th. So those days I'm gone. Well, then it's the 20th. And I'm going to really protest if you hold it while I'm gone. So we're to the, out to the 27th, Am I hearing that right? The 27th is a Thursday. You could wait till the Monday of the 31st. Yeah. How about this week? We need a three-day notice. Right, three-day notice. You got all that three days? Yeah, Sunday night I gotta leave. Yeah. I and mean, you have to give people time to react and change their plans to get here. I say you plan something the week of the thirty-first. That makes sense. Week of the thirty-first, so that would be the first or the thirty-first. Uh, Do it the thirty-first then. So the commission back? meeting on the thirty-first. John, are you available the 31st? Well, yes, as far as I know, yes. Okay. Committee at 2 p.m. Yeah, the council meeting at <coughs> 7 p.m. Uh, or, or 6 p.m., I don't care which. Huh? September 3rd? Or that same day? 
Labor Day is not till the seventh or so. It's later. What's a good idea? Same day. Same day. August thirty first. August sure. thirty first, seven p.m. Oh. Seven p.m. All right. But I'd like it in the evening, six seven o'clock. Seven o'clock council. Okay. John, are you seconding yep. that? I'll accept those changes. Okay, so we got a motion. Don, you got something you want to throw into that? We got a motion and a second. Can I, can I jump back in? Like, what are you kicking the can down the road for? I mean, the whole committee is pretty much here. Well, well no, I mean, no, it's not. you guys make the decisions. You there's decided, a, there's a what, I got the podium. Yeah. You decided a long time ago to build this building and not remodel that other building and include it all. So now you decided it's going to be the fire department over there, city hall and police station here. You've made that decision. Now make the right decision and just continue with what you've already done. You've already poured money into a remodel. You've already agreed to a number with these guys or send it out for bid for another one. They're on carte blanche time right now. You guys make the damn decision. You don't need to form committees to do all this crap. You were elected to make a decision. Now make it. It's that simple. You don't need any more approval from all your buddies. Just make the decision. If you know what's right for the community, stand up and decide it. That's pretty simple. Thank you, Doc. I can say something. Go ahead. I'll make a motion we go with a new building. Well, actually, don't we have a motion going here for when the he's committee? he's done, I'll make no. it now. You make a motion? No, but we have to deal. We have to decide if what we're doing with this motion. We got a motion and a second. So, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. I'll go aye too. All opposed? No. Right. Motion dies. John, did you vote? Yeah, but no. 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 All right. Well, that was successful. You know what I think we should do too is do this interview shortly, so at least we got five people here. That would help make the decision. That was a nice block you did. Deal with this now. What? Well, I didn't catch that. That last. was a nice block you did by waiting till the meeting to bring up the interview thing. And you too, Shard, because you told us at the interview thing that we didn't have to interview. No, the day before you told me, I said, do we need to make appointments with the interview? Well, I said, do we have said, to? No, oh. I know all of them. It's, it's We're not going to do the interview. That's what you. Well, yeah, but you said we didn't I'm have not to. Part of that committee. Well, you, well, you were taking minutes, but I'll, I take minutes. typically you're the authority, you or Mike, and you both indicated after it that it was done. Okay, but okay, if you're going to make a motion, make it. Then. Pardon? You were going to make a motion. Yeah, I, based on the cost, I think the cost, the long-term cost for the city, and the citizens, is less, and you get a better building for a longer period of time which was highlighted on that sheet of paper that so Mike, Mike had up on the... What's your motion? The motion is that I think it's in the best interest that we proceed and we're allowed to change our mind that we proceed with the construction of a new building and do not go ahead and pour any more money into the old one. Okay, we've got a motion. Do we have a second on that? I would second that. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye. Huh. Well, look at that. If, if, if you can't take it back and trust these people to come and work with us, I think that's a problem. And I, well, that's why I'm trying to get it to move quickly so we don't lose any more time. Did you want to get done early tonight, Chair? I'll spend the whole night here again, so I don't care. All right. Well, I don't know where this I didn't is understand going. your comment, Mr. Herzog. We need to trust these people that they'll come together quickly and make a decision, help us with the decision. And that's why I was trying to get the committee to move quickly. I understand. Okay.
So I'm sorry, Aaron. Did we go ahead with your motion? Did we schedule a committee meeting? No. We did. No. That just got lost. No. It was two to two. So yeah. what have we accomplished here? Nothing. Nothing. We need a counselor or somebody here. I don't know. Do we just drop it and move forward? I mean, these people can't believe what they're witnessing here, but I can't either, frankly. I think we have new information over the last three months in terms of what needs fixing in the building that we didn't have before that. Um, I'm okay with Aaron's idea that we, and I also think I need some information from the public, which I haven't been able to get during the COVID situation. So I'm not out seeing people. I'm, I'm scared to death there's hidden costs that we're not getting information on, John. And right now, if we make a decision tonight, I think it's going to be an emotional decision. And, and I don't think that the citizens, I think they expect more of us than to make an emotional decision. Mike, is it possible you could put your sheet up one more time? I've, I've read through that sheet. Well, I, I guess the point that I'm trying to make is it sh he has a cost per year there. I've, I've seen, I've read And the I've cost read, per read. year, the cost of a year for a, for a $3.6 million facility is less money than a facility that we're remodeling that's going to last half the life. <coughs> I, and so when, when that half-life arrives in 25 years, the point I was trying to make is that the costs that we're seeing today, we'll never see them. They're going to be probably twice what they are to do anything with a new building. If you're lucky, so the, so the, just be right. the, So the city, whoever's here at the time, is going to have to wrestle with this issue then. And I know 25 years, everybody says, oh, that's so far down the road, I don't want to worry about it. But we're just kicking the can down the road. And I'm, I'm looking out for a long-term decision. I've looked out at other fire halls, how they build them. And we've talked about tornadoes, winds. You know, who knows what's going to happen. We can luck by with this building for 20-some years. I'm just making my decision based on the cost. And the long-term cost, it's less for a new building than it is to remodel. And it's safer in a new building. Okay, but that was a motion with a second, and it died. It failed, correct? All right. We're just yeah. talking again. God, we've been talking. I know. About this. You have your opinion. There's others that have. They're <coughs> entitled to another opinion. Jerry, do you have an opinion? Yes, I do. My opinion is, Dave, you're so worried about 50-year deal. Everything's going to be higher. Are we going to redo every road next year? Because in 20 years, it's going to be higher to redo them, too. And last year, our property taxes went up 11%. This year, we got this building that'll be going on there. We build a fire hall for another $4 million. Who's going to live in Cross Lake? We won't need a fire department. Taxes will be so high that you wouldn't be able to afford to live here. Half the guys, he doesn't live here, he doesn't live here. They don't care. And as far as the mold is go, I was in construction. Mold you can take care of. You find a water problem, take care of it, the mold is gone. I just think that we have spent more money in the last year or so that we don't need to throw another two to two and a half million dollars on top of the heap right now. We got a situation, an economy here that's not good. We can kick it down the road 20 years and then they can address it because they're not going to have to rebuild this one then. They're not going to have to do a lot of projects. We're doing too much at one time right now in this town. And I have heard from a lot of people that we're going to push them off. Hello, Dan. Uh, Dan Hegerston, 33553 Sandpoint Drive. Mayor, I campaigned for you. I voted for you. You misled me. I was on the committee. You never once brought this information to me at the time, nor the people that were there. It's very misleading. I right now am questioning your ability to lead this community. 
I'm very disappointed in where this is going. I'm not going to take a stand on whether or not we should spend 3.6 million or 2.1 million. I haven't been inside of a building since March 15th since COVID came on, but I felt strongly enough to come here and tell you that. The disappointment level I have with you right now is unpalpable. So please, lead. Don't lead with what you actually, I understand what you're trying to do here, but you're not leading the community. So let's, when you say Don, whoever was up here before, you weren't part of this process. There were 13 of us that were there, and we did not have the information that we needed in order to make a decision. And that, I'm really disappointed. Thank you, Dan. Anybody else? Hi, Cindy. Hi, Cindy Mulito, 38397, County Road 3, Cross Lake. I can only suggest that if you want some public input, um, there's a variety of ways to do that. You could do a survey monkey. Um, you could just publish it in the paper that there's an open, open comment period. Um, it sounds like you can't get together for a meeting till the end of the month anyway. Um, so you might ga garner some public input if you opened up a couple of those vehicles for the public to speak. Thank you. So I'll do that, Cindy. So you're saying just do the public comment and have a meeting schedule where they can also come and attend. Right. Well, I know you're talking about right a committee now. of people, and I don't know who that committee is. I don't know who those people represent. Um, but if you're looking for comment from the public, um, I wouldn't just you know, have a committee. They can compile the information that they get from the public, perhaps. Um, but, uh, John, you mentioned that you hadn't spoken to anyone in the public. So if you create a vehicle for them to speak, and maybe it's be a survey monkey or, you know, maybe a Zoom meeting, I don't know. Um, but you should offer the public some input. Perhaps that would be helpful. Char, is there a mandatory 30 days on that when you do the public input, or can it be shorter? Right. Well, first of all, you don't it doesn't require a public comment, but the council needs something to kind of get past two two. I mean, you can do any method you want and meet next week. I mean, there doesn't have to be a certain amount of time allowed, you know, for a comment period or something like that. You can create something if that helps you get off a two two, or get another council member, or I mean. There, something to get it off dead center, you know. Yeah, maybe that would be the best thing. Do our interviews. Get past that. Try to get a fifth council member up here. Maybe that would go one way or the other. Maybe we should do that. Today's Monday. We could do that when. Does that have to be posted for the personnel committee? No. Yeah. It does? So we could do that Thursday or Friday? If you can make appointments. Well, so if they're not available, then we have to reschedule for them? Well, I mean, everything gets awful difficult. Oh, boy. The mayor make the appointment, and then we'll meet. Okay? Make, schedule a date and make the appointment for all so four. So, can we do it Thursday or no? Yes. Yes? To, okay, let's do it Thursday. Starting at 9 o'clock in the morning and leave an hour for each one. And then we could probably schedule a special council meeting for Friday, then, correct? And we could get past this hurdle. I won't be here, but that's up to you. You could do it Thursday if that helps your schedule. Well, we could do it Thursday afternoon. Can you do it Thursday afternoon? Dave? Talking this week then? Yeah. You have the meetings, you have the interviews Thursday morning. I should be here Thursday afternoon. Do a special meeting at 3 o'clock Thursday afternoon? No. Okay, I make a motion that we do that. Hold interviews Thursday morning, 9, 10, 11 o'clock. And at 12. And at 12. Second. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four. All in favor. Motion carries. 
Now do we have to schedule the special council meeting too, or is that all in the same motion? Okay, good. Done. So the special council meeting is Thursday, three o'clock. Three o'clock p.m. Okay. Now, I think. Well, Brad's not here, but I mean, is Thursday work for you guys? Kevin? Yes, sir. Okay, so three of them are in for Thursday. Okay. I assume it works for Eric and uh, Mike? No. That was part of the motion, so I will be going on Thursday. Again, that's why I asked to have it done today when I was around. So you're gone tomorrow too? No, I'm here tomorrow. I, I, I'm sorry. You'll be here tomorrow. You're here tomorrow. Right. Last Monday when I asked that the personnel committee be moved and you and Aaron and uh, Mayor Nevin chose to keep it last Thursday instead of rescheduling it for today when we could have done the interviews as it was the process was set forth. Um, we could have had those that recommendation done today with the correct procedure being done. This coming Thursday, I will also be gone and won't be back until Monday next week. Now, you guys still have a quorum of the of the uh, personnel it. committee, but I don't agree with it. So he can be here. I'll be here Wednesday. So let's just do it Thursday. Let's move on. Okay. Okay. So I would request this that uh, I be replaced right now on the personnel committee, possibly by Chief Low Miller, TJ, John, someone else who is around as staff and can represent. Can we do interviews on Wednesday? The personnel committee can meet? No, you need. It's a public it's meeting. A okay. Well, well, it's not a quorum. Personnel, of the personnel is not a quorum. It's not of the council. You only get three day notice for a committee meeting? No, especially if we're at an open public meeting right now and we're going to publicly announce a committee meeting. We're fine there. If that helps move things forward, we can still have your council meeting on. on I'm up for it. So, who made that? You are happy on the date then? You're going to interview Wednesday? So that I'm get, get, get everybody yeah. can interview? So Wednesday the 12th, 9, 10, 11, and 12 o'clock. Council meeting to follow at 3 p.m. No. no the next oh, that's what we can't do. Okay, so, but we can keep that Thursday. I think that's the best plan. I mean, keep, you had your Thursday interview worked Wednesday, out. Wednesday, council yeah. Thursday. Okay, is that a motion? Who's going to, I'll make that motion. Second. Aaron seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, so we'll get past that on Thursday. We're done with the building for right now. I'm going to move on to E2. A uh, letter from Richard and Mary Johnson in regards to VRBOs. And I've read, is Mary and Richard here? Do they, no. It's people who are having trouble with VRBOs and the only thing we can do is, in, the county has put up an ordinance to it, so we gotta encourage them to contact the county. The city has taken the stand that we're gonna kinda sit back for a year and see how the county does before we implement any stricter guidelines in town. So we haven't done anything to date. The sheriff is the person they got to call for enforcement. Mm. You got something to add to that? Yeah, I could have please. Sure. Great. Um, if there is somebody, I don't recall having any uh, complaints regarding this property or know of any other less than a handful of complaints regarding VRBOs. I know I got a complaint regarding one on 
County Road 3 regarding garbage here within the last two months. I don't recall anything else, but I would encourage people, if there is a noise complaint, if there is a nuisance complaint, to contact us so we can at least document it and I can have information for you at the next meeting. But you know, call when it's going on. When Hopefully it's going on, don't call the next day. Right. Well, or that day. Yep. You can. Yep. And document it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, E3 is accepting a donation from Christina Sesson for $34 intended purpose to the Park Department. So I guess we need a motion to accept that donation. I'll move. Got a motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Christine. Aye. Okay, four is letter dated from, oh, the railroad company. Where are you guys? Who's coming up, Joel? <laughs> the railroad company is coming up asking for a property tax exception exemption. That's correct. My name is Tom Fitzpatrick. I'm a past president of the group, and you know Joel Knippel with me. He's a current co-president and a member of the board. The purpose for our visit this evening, we thank you for giving us time, is to ask that you exercise your local option to grant our request for a property tax exemption for the, we're going to call it the Northern Trackers building, the train club building that's on Main Street on Route 66. We're the ones that came out of the ashes that your chief and fire department helped to save or try to save a few years ago. Um, the purpose of the exemption, uh, as adopted by the legislature in 1981, is to provide an opportunity for old people like us to uh, stay off the streets and recreate, and in our case here in Cross Lake, hopefully provide something of value, real value to the community by providing not only our own amusement by doing uh, historical work related to trains, but also by building layouts and being open to the public so that we're trying to be and are becoming an attraction here in Cross Lake that draws visitors to the community along with the other uh, amenities that you have. In 1981, first of all, the statute that provides for exemptions of property from real estate taxes is lengthy. It's 17 pages long. Um, it includes the obvious ones that everybody knows about, like churches, public buildings, public cemeteries. And in 1981, the legislature added this provision providing for uh, clubhouses, recreational facilities, and other properties under one acre used by, owned and used by senior citizens could be exempt by, from uh, local or from property tax if approved by the local governing body, and we met the requirements of the statute, which we do. Oddly enough, and I think it's telling, the legislature adopted that, that exemption unanimously by a unanimous vote, both in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. I think probably reflecting the fact that people don't want to vote against old people, and we hope you don't again. Um, we'll answer whatever questions you might have. You've got a big agenda here, but we really urge you to uh, exercise your authority to provide us with this exemption. It's vitally important to us. We've made a huge commitment to the community by going forward with the building project and the layout projects and so on that we've got. It's been tough and going to be tough the next year or two because COVID, like everybody else, it's hit us and we haven't been able to do our major fundraisers. Uh, for example, the spaghetti dinner that we had at, at uh, Moonlight Bay last fall, we were scheduled for two this year, they're canceled. We sell product uh, at uh, train shows and help to raise revenue, those have been canceled. And so it's just another example, like everybody else's, that we really need help. Okay. Do you guys charge for people to come in and look at the train club? 
We don't charge per se. We now are requesting a goodwill offering of five dollars uh, per visitor. And that's really optional. We only started that in the last couple of months after we got the building to the point where we felt we could justify that and some dem some uh, exhibits and, and... You don't have any intention of charging more than that? I mean, that's your intent? It's I'm not, sorry. It's I'm not so a profitable company, right? We're a non-profit. We're a 501c3. Is that what you so asked? You're going to try to charge a little bit to pay the electric, heat, whatever. Right. Okay. How do you guys feel about that? Now, Brad, I'm assuming we could only relieve the city portion of it. We can't do the whole the whole tax because the county is part of it. Um, no, it, it actually in statute, pretty much everything else, it's at a county level. This actually, that's what Tom was trying to say. It, it actually is a local option here. It still has to go through the county next, but it starts here with the city agreeing. So we'd be the first step yeah, for yeah. them to move forward. So we actually have a say in it. Yeah. I'll move that we uh, move forward with that. I support the railroad. You guys, and, and the time that they put into that thing is incredible. So I'll second that. So we got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. There Thanks so much. That's, Thank you. Thank that's you. hugely yeah. important for us. Thanks so much. Good. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, uh, Cindy, I guess you're next. Good evening again. Uh, Cindy Mugato with the Cross Lake Chamber of Commerce, and I'm here to talk to you tonight about Cross Lake Days. Um, it would be the 34th event for the city of Cross Lake to host Cross Lake Days, which is traditionally the last Saturday of the month of September. This Saturday will be September 26th. Um, and that event typically includes a chili cook-off. Um, and that chili cook-off is designed to bring um, the patrons into the businesses to sample chili, to visit the businesses in Cross Lake that maybe they've not been into before, um, or want to do some shopping or dining or um, have a beverage while they're there. Um, because of COVID this year, and because of the fact that the businesses are already challenged with staffing issues, um, and the six foot distancing within their businesses. Uh, the committee, my volunteer committee, um, has opted to not host a chili cook off this year, but instead find some events that the community can participate in that they're outside, friendly, um, COVID protocol, special distancing, and all that stuff. Um, so we plan to go ahead with the hunt for the ch hidden chili pepper. Um, we are planning to have a cornhole tournament in front of Cross Lake Ace Hardware. Um, the arts and crafts, of course, will be located at the Exchange parking lot as well as the Lions Craft Flea Market. Um, if you remember that unicycler that was at the St. Patrick's Day Parade a couple years ago, very high up in the, on a unicycle, he has agreed to come back to town and can do some exhibits in a, few, a variety of locations. Um, we'd like to have the loon calling contest in the gazebo under, at the town square area. Um, and we're working on a couple other events. Um, so I guess I don't really need your permission to have Cross Lake Days because what I did need was permission for the chili cook-off. But because we're not going to have that event associated with the event this year, um, the only other thing I may request of you, and depending on how many teams turn out for that cornhole tournament, um, we may want to partition off a section of Pioneer Drive. So it would be the road in between Reeds and Ace Hardware. Um, we can safely distance the cornhole tournaments in that stretch of Pioneer Drive. Um, the reeds and the solars have agreed to that. Um, you know, it, it wouldn't block any of their entrances. Have you approached Chip and Eric about that? I have not. Okay, how, you guys? Eric? This thing is fluid. You don't have a problem? This thing is really quite fluid. Um, we are holding off as long as we can to see what's going to happen, you know, with the whole protocol. Um, but today we're about 45 days out um, and we think we can do these things safely. So I'm not saying for sure we would want a part of Pioneer Drive, but if it comes to that, um, we'd like to be able to plan for that. And it would just be in between the driveways of Reeds and Ace Hardware. So those businesses would have plenty of entrances and exits aside from that one section. So I would make a motion to tell you to go ahead and do whatever you want to do. I would ask you to check with Chip and Eric both to make sure it falls in it. A part of that motion would be that if you need barricades from Ted. Yep. Okay. So my motion is just to accommodate the chamber and what they want to try to do. 
and keep it safe. You know. All of these events that we're planning certainly comply with all of the COVID safety yeah. protocol. I second it. Okay, so we got a motion and a second. Any discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Mike, your turn. All right, thank you. Um, item F1 on the agenda is a memo from the clerk. If you remember back in April 13th, um, we voted to postpone the payment of liquor license renewal fees for the city's off sale liquor licenses, all off sale. And because we were closed down from basically March 17th to June 1st, we're asking to pass on some relief to those business owners by uh, giving them a three month relief for the license period. I would vote for that. I'll, I'll make second a motion that. to approve. I'll second it. The second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. All right. The second item under F2 is uh, now that we're in our new building, we we get a lot of echoing in here, as everyone has experienced. And what we'd like to do is we've got two bids, two quotes here to try to fix that as best we can. We have one from Stewart Sound Systems and one from Digital Horizons. Uh, Stewart Sound Systems is a local company, four thousand seventy-eight dollars and forty-five cents, and Digital Horizons, seven thousand nine ninety-two twenty. Staff is recommending to award the quote to add sound pan deadening panels in this room to uh, Stewart Sound System and approve a down payment of twenty-eight seventy-eight forty-five. I'll move that we accept that, that idea and use uh, Stewart Sound System. I'll second it. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Would it make any sense at all to do half of it at first and then see if we need the rest of it or just do the whole thing? The echo is not terrible in here to me, but it's there, but that would be my only comment. They came in here and researched the room and said that this okay. is what you need. So we got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, the uh, item F2A also relates to sound. Um, some of us can't always hear when others are talking. And so we're looking for some hearing devices, hearing assist system with receivers. In fact, uh, you know, we can debate that the ADA requirements till the cows come home on it, but we really should have something so people that are hearing impaired or need hearing assistance can have that so they can participate actively in the meetings. Is and that a stationary unit or is something that could be moved around? It does, is it plugging in? I mean, is it mounted on They're here? Bluetooth, I believe. There are individual, there's five individual devices. Yeah, there's five Could individual devices. Could you take devices. them to the admin or something and use them, or no? We'd use them the, the answer to that question is no. It, it's a system that's integrated into our system that we have here in only this room, and it'll be hooked up for FM for people to pick up a receiver and put it in their pocket and plug it into their ears or their hearing aids that they have. Or it's a system that will send out its own Wi-Fi signal that anyone that's in the room that has a phone can connect with their phone and then they can plug into their own uh, thing so there's no contamination of parts or anything so like that. Hearing assist. It's hearing assist and like Mike said, you, we can debate it, but what I read in the ADA uh, requirements, it is required in this room. Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. Motion to approve, I'm assuming? Yes. Motion to approve by John? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, the, the next item is F2B, and it also relates to sound panels. If any of you have been in the, in the admin side of the office and experienced the echoing, it's, it's actually worse than it is in here. Um, so we're looking at trying to fix that as best we can. Now the reason this quote is a little bit higher than the one for the room we're in right now is because these panels would be required to be mounted on the ceiling. Um, they'd be within the fire code and so we're asking to add those panels to that room to deaden the sound in there for 68.36.90 again from Stewart Sound Systems. I'll move that we approve this. 
and put it in. I second it. And obviously it's necessary or you wouldn't be doing it, right? Okay, we got a motion and a second to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right, the last item, number three on my, on, under my report is um, a reminder to all of you that we have upcoming budget meetings. Um, we talked tonight, we've all got a lot of things to talk about during the budget, and we've got a lot of challenges to try to overcome, whether it's roads or sewers or, or buildings or vehicles or whatever it is. So I'm hoping for a, a lot of spirited yet polite discussion on that. So as a reminder, the, the budget meetings are August 13th, the 27th, the 10th, and, and September 10th. Now remember, we have to have a budget. Now, we talked about August 13th. We have a 3 o'clock special meeting. Yeah. And this is at 2 o'clock. Yep. So, so if you want to move that... Okay, so if you want to move that meeting up or move it out, we can do that either way. I would suggest to move the August 13th to the following Monday. Or just leave it where it is. Or we can leave it as it is. The, the real purpose of that meeting is to, is to show you a first pass at the budget, some very preliminary numbers. We don't have a lot of final numbers at this point, um, but we have a pretty good idea of what, what the big picture looks like, and we'll use that meeting to get some direction so we can go back and sharpen the pencil. And so those meetings are open to the public. Yes, they are. Okay. Yeah, I would say it's going to be a full day. But our last interview was at twelve. No, your interviews are on Wednesday. Wednesday. This Wednesday. is Thursday. Wednesday. These are on Thursday. Two and three. Oh. You just move this meeting to three. No. Okay. no. Leave it like I'm it is. Fine with that. Okay. Well, then before we all leave tonight. I do have a, a package for each one of the council members. And that's just for the third for it. Yeah, two o'clock. Two o'clock. For this, and then three. For the council. Right. Yep. Well, it's council at both. Yeah, we're at both, so it doesn't matter. Right. That's all I have, unless there are questions. No. Thank you. Hey, Eric, or, yeah, Eric, you're up, I think. Okay, first off, I have to admit I was a little distracted there. I apologize about that. I was texting my mom and wife about the chili cook-off, and they were fully expecting to win this year. So I apologize. Um, just real quick, the Cross Lake American Legion donated a POW MIA flag to the Cross Lake Police Department, and I'm requesting that we accept that and we fly it with our American flag here at City Hall. Secondly, I want to acknowledge uh, Cross Lake American Legion for their support that they've given both the fire department, fire department and us uh, over the past few years. They've always been great to us, so that's it. So move. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to accept the flag. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank motion you. Should, should there be a little plaque down there that says from them or flag donated by or something? I, I don't okay. know that we have to do that necessarily, but uh, uh, we can. I, I'd, I'd be fine with it if you did. I mean, in the city paid. No. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We can take a look into that. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. Hey, TJ, what do you have? Good evening, Mayor Council. Um, you have in front of you um, a request for council action titled Request to Improve City Right Away. I'll run all over the background. And if you have any questions, the two gentlemen are here to answer any questions further. Uh, John Forney and Brian Evanson approached the Parks S Library Commission with a formal request to improve the city right of way located, be located between their properties, 11797 Whitefish Ave and 11805 Whitefish Ave. Mr. Forney and Mr. Evanson are experiencing runoff and erosion issues on the right of way. So the, the staff recommendation from the commission would be to approve their recommendation or their request to um, make improvements on this public right or this um, city owned right away. So, Ted, is that the same area that you're talking about, some concrete or something that needs to be done or not? No, this is actually before that, before Hilltop, their properties are. Okay. And they're going to spend their own funds. Um, someday, 
my opinion is the city may need to put some funds into this topic, but right now they're spending their own funds to do it. So I would. So you just want approval to go ahead and do it, John? Yes. I'd recommend that we approve it. Make the I'll, motion. I'll second that. Okay, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Well, that's all I have. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I have one item before you today. It's a recommendation from the Planning Commission Board of Adjustment to approve revisions to the city um, land use ordinance. Uh, this was all done back about a year ago. Oh, not a, not a year. We started a year ago. Everything was approved in January. Um, you asked that we put it on hold over the winter so that more people could comment. Um, it was put out for um, public comment on March 5th. It's actually been on the website since then, um, but the formal 30-day uh, comment period um, ended during the, the epidemic that we have here, the pandemic. Um, as a whole, between March 5th and today, we received zero comments from the public. Um, but if you have any questions specific to any of the items that are on there, I certainly will be willing to discuss them with you, but they, the Planning Commission recommended that you approve as submitted. And then we would also, if you're gonna make a motion for that, we would also like you to make a motion that the um, city clerk publish the changes to the ordinance at the same time in that same motion. So this should be effective somewhere around the end of this month. Uh, I so move. Second. And they've looked carefully. You got a 50 foot right away instead of a 33 foot is that Correct. Can you see that causing any hardship? No, we've actually been applying that in the last few plats that we've had. And the people like it better because with a 30 foot right away, you can't really, they have a, a problems getting their road in there to meet all the setbacks, especially because nobody wants just a plain straight road. They want it to wind and you can't do that with a 35 foot. Right, yeah. So they, they approved everything. I think you have one of the folks here tonight it was okay, so we unanimous. got a motion and a second on it. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other conversation? No. Nope. All Good in job. favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. carries. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for letting me get up. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I have uh, quotes in front of you tonight from Fisher Works and Beach Construction. Um, on the uh, road right away on South Landing, we have an erosion problem that's been going on for quite a while. We'd like to take and put concrete into that and basically a curb line down that hill um, to from uh, Fisher Works to do it. He had gave me a quote for $5,900, and Beach Construction was $2,760. So with that, I would like to award it to Beach Construction if I can. I mean, I mean yeah, Beach Construction. Okay, Ted, a uh, question on it, though, is on the Beach Construction, it says curb and gutter. Is that what you're going to do? Basically, yes. We're going to put a physical curb is what we're going to do. You don't think that'll interfere with plowing, huh? And the plow will just ride up on top of it. They'll take a, make a um, taper to it, and the plow will ride up on top of it if we have to. That was the problem. We, we tried a... a bituminous curb, and that's what was taking it out. The plow would get up and just tear it out little bit by little bit. But you don't think a little flat trough and a concrete would take care of it? You don't want to do that? You want to curb it? It's a lot of water. I want to do it once and be done with it. Okay, I just I want mean, to verify you, that. You see that it washed it out again this last weekend oh, again. So. It does all the time. I so move. I've watched that particular area for eight years as I walk it, and uh, I've seen you try to do all sorts of stuff, so great idea. Okay, we got a motion to approve. We have a second? Yes, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And then the second part of that is on Whitefish Avenue, we have a second spot there that keeps washing out. On that area we've tried rock, we've tried um, just about everything we can think of. We had a bituminous gutter in there, it's all washed out. And Beach Construction gave us a quote for doing that one for $4,865. And that is 180 foot on the road, and they're going to take it down, swale it down, mm -hmm. and dump it out in the woods? Dump it out in the woods like it, that's how it was always designed, is to go out in the woods there. 
Do you expect how thick it is or whatever? Or I mean, do you, um, is it going to hold up? Dave, you got to... That's a surmountable MnDOT curb. It's got a full eight inches underneath it. So it's an eight inch concrete. Yeah, it's called an S418, so an 18 inch gutter, four inch back on it. So it'll hold up. Yep. Do you keep an eye on the grading and the material used yeah. for grading and whatever? Yeah. Okay, do we have a motion on that one? So moved. Second. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next item is you have a change order, or I mean, a, a, a yeah, change order number one for board, um, <coughs> board and excavating for the Perkins project. Dave, you got anything to add to this? This change order request came before the Public Works Commission at their meeting and their recommendation was to approve it. It was a reasonable request on the commission's uh, opinion and ours <clears throat> due to delay in getting materials from a foundry uh, due to the COVID issues and also the paving contractors delays due to weather. So. It's extending it from August 7th to August 28th. No money, just time? Just time. Don't move. Got a motion? Second? Sec I'll second it. Motion on the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Let me take these. Okay, the sec next one on the agenda is a pay request for Borden excavating for Perkins Road. This is a partial payment request in the amount of $162,817.65. Our recommendation is to make payment. I'll make that motion. Okay, I'll got a motion. I'll take it in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Item D is a pay request. Number two for De Chantel excavating for the water quality project in the amount of $199,155.78. This is for all work completed through the month of July. Was and that contract 450 approximately? I can tell you that. <laughs> So with this pay request, we're giving them about 250 on the project. Is that correct? The amount of the contract is $414,965. And we give them 79 the first request? Right, for materials on hand. So, so they're about 70% completed. So we're still good with money and whatever else. Yeah. Okay. So move. Got a motion? I'll second it. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. Mr. Mayor, in front of you, I have uh, two quotes to do the yard here at City Hall. Um, one from Abra and one from L.A. Lawn. What I requested from these gentlemen is put us a yard in that we can mow and maintain. We have a sprinkler system in, but rowels we're growing right now is basically weeds. Um, Aber Landscaping came in and they, um, their quote is to put new black dirt down and slit seed it and then establish the turf from there. Um, LA Lawn Care is actually going to use the dirt. They feel that the dirt that is here just needs to be moved around. So they were going to regrade it and um, rototill it in and then they were going to come and hydro seed. So that's the difference in the two quotes. Um, Abra's was 23,880, and LA was $15,327.88. Is the sprinkler system in and running? Yes, it's running today. Completely, I mean, yes. it's good? Yes. So the dirt that's there is good as long as it gets water? Yep, I think is if they can get it moved back around like they say they can, it should be fine. 
And all that blanket that they put down is going to be thrown in the dumpster? Yeah, that, that blanket was erosion control. That was, um, that was put in by Shrupp Excavating, and that was their, their part of the project, was basically just to stabilize the soils so it didn't erode until something was decided on. And high tech didn't have any, nothing in there? Nope. Did they pay for that uh, sprinkler? No, we ended up paying the sprinkler. Okay, I'll make a motion we go with LA. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Yeah, who's doing that? Yeah. Perkins, yeah. Oh, Item F, we submitted an email with some photos that were taken after the last bit of concrete work out on Perkins Road. Photos show some damage to the surfacing uh, finish on that road, and it was a bicycle, uh, even in spite of the barricades that were put up how deep are they? How deep are the cracks? It's it's not necessarily it it uh, marred the surface where the broom broom finish on the concrete slab was located, and uh, you know that that's something that can't really be uh, rejuvenated. So. Um, the contractors attempted to do some removal of some of the markings that were left. It's kind of like they skidded out on it and then put their feet down and so what marred it up. To do with it? Well, we've asked the contractor to give us some ideas or options with how to maybe remedy that. Um, it's, it's a concern for um, the property owner. It's right out in front of the house there. And very uh, diligent in trying to keep everything looking good out there in front of his place, and we have been trying very hard to do that too. This is uh, uh, probably one of the few concrete streets uh, that the city will be maintaining. So, so is it right by the house, did you say? It's right in front of the house. Yeah. Is this Why were we doing that then? It's part of the road project. It's part of the drainage plan. So it's like with, vandalism or just... We don't know. It, it could have just been a, a kid that came down the road. So, so we don't know who did it? No. Did anybody report it to the police? Um, we haven't reported it to the police. We just reported it to the city. Could we so. take some forensic tire prints and see if we can go around the neighborhood and see who did it? <clears throat> All right. The reason we reported it is you need to know about it. Um, the homeowner's not happy with it. It would be an expensive fix yeah. to really rejuvenate the surface, or I don't even want to think about getting into replacing the slab in itself. It's an expensive